we're live. We are live. We are live. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Sean. Glad you could. Uh, glad you could pop in. Is that Jonathan? Uh, it is Mr. ADV Oregon. Nice. Hey, Sean. <laughs> nice. Hey, Sean. <sighs> All right. Woo. Nice. Am I on the show, eh? No, oh, you're on the show. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, take off, you hoser. Take <laughs> off, you hoser. <laughs> oh, I, I thought I, I was. <laughs> I heard the call. I heard the call. <laughs> yeah, hoser. Uh, you got any? Of the, you, you got any of that back bacon on? I, oh, no, I, just, I don't. I just, I just ate that, eh? Yeah. Oh, I don't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, hang on. Oh, boy. Oh, geez, eh? I tell you. Oh. I didn't, didn't know I was going live this evening with Bob and Doug McKenzie here. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Great White North, eh? Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, eh? Cheers. Oh. So, uh, yeah, eh? Oh, Whew. It's a hell of a winter we're having, eh? It's been brutal. Oh, it it's has been oh, way too long. Oh, it's hey, snowed today wait. here. I'm on, I'm on Vancouver Island. Hang on. Hang on, eh? Hang on, eh? Yeah, we're in the middle of a... I'll call it sprinter right now. Like, it's like kind of yeah. spring, kind of winter. Like, Mother Nature likes to give us plus 15 to snow under minus 10. But uh, what am I drinking? Sean, I picked the most Canadian bottle I could find. It's an independent bottler, so I don't know exactly what's in it, but it oh. is Canadian corn whiskey. Ah. Ah. Woo. All right. <laughs> Woo. Winner. Whatever, eh? Vancouver <laughs> Island. It's like the California of the West Coast, California, it Canada. It basically is. I think I missed the costume change. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Enough tomfoolery. <sighs> How you guys doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. Good. I had to change. I was way too hot, man. I bet you were. Yeah. Oh, my I'm... beard melted off. <laughs> I'm about to go do that same thing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're about to go melt your beard off too. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Who do we got in the chat? Who's here? Who all is here? I've been fighting around too much. Who is here? Can I? I have no idea what I'm doing. For anybody that's wondering, I've never done this. So, is okay. there a way? Is there a way I can see like who's here? The comments. Find a place that says comment. Yeah, I got that. Okay, and then just scroll up and down. That's what I do. Oh, okay. I just didn't know if there was a way you could see like a list. No. Of people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got uh, ADV Oregon. Cool. Dual Wanders. Hey, y'all. Valkyrie, we've got others waiting in the other live that was scheduled. What uh, did I schedule too? Oh, I bet you your links got cross contibulated. Oh. Okay, so you got to go to that other one. How do I Let do that? See. Can I, I do it on my? I'll see if I can mm. do it here. Boing. Let me see if I can figure it out. Oh, gotcha. You I got did it. end up with two. You did, right? Did. Two links. So you got to go on that link and say, go to the other one quickly. How do I do this? This is above my... Uh... Your pay grade? <laughs> yeah, 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 just a little. <laughs> I'll put it in the other chat. Oh, Brittany's here now. Yeah, I just can't do the camera thing. Like oh, that means everybody's going to miss the Bob and Doug bit. Oh, I changed too soon. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. 
I'm 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 holding down the fort. Okay. <laughs> but I'm about to go change. I turned the furnace off in the garage. Yeah. It's still gonna get too hot in here. So and Sean, we've always known you're an overachiever. <laughs> okay, let's see. Thirty percent. Uh oh. All right. Oh, Who is I that guy at the bottom of the screen? <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. Uh, hmm. Okay. All right. I, I, it's time for my costume change. So yeah, get that jacket and hat off. Change it. Wow! 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 Oh, what? You're not going to do it on camera? <laughs> Hat change. Oh. Ah, I like it. Yep. Representing. Curdo. Hey, you came back. Right. Hey, good life ADV. Oh, good life ADV. Hope the uh, hope the foot is healing well for you. Kitty, kitty. Holy smokes, eh? <laughs> I should have changed my name to something else. Nobody recognized me. <laughs> I I was like, who who is this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> you know, yep. it's, it's it's funny that that you you know shave off the facial hair. I my wife and I have been together since late two thousand five. She's never seen me without facial hair. Is that right? Ever? Yeah. Mine is always bugging me to shave I, it off. I yeah. always had a beard, and I would still have a beard. A little bit I've got right now is just from not shaving for a week, but it's a work requirement for me to be clean shaven at work. So right, right. Well, I am not. I am not shaving ever again, ever. I'm just, <laughs> just going to grow now. Done. Critter Mountain Man. Yes. Yeah. I like Valkyrie, it. you're right. Uh, I mean, that's why it came off. It was so hot. I mean, we had. We had sun, and it was about 30 degrees. We were out at the beach. We were swimming, riding our bikes. You know, I mean, poor Owen is up there in frozen land. But, uh, yeah, Vancouver Island, you know. You know what? The next four days here is calling for anywhere from, like, 10 to 13 degrees. So Holy smokes, really? Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the GS is going to come out of hiding here for the first time. Time to bring her out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think normally it's like one of these. We're just, you know, spinning it <laughs> to see what happens. Yeah. And that is the wheel off my Africa twin. That's probably the most action it's seen all winter. <laughs> you're 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 absolutely right. Yeah. That that uh, I mean the rest of the bike is in pieces. So yeah, it's fine. It's whatever. It's a Honda, it'll still run. Look at that oh. thing spin. Nicely balanced. Very no, it's terribly balanced. Just you wait. I'll Okay, I can see it. Uh -huh. To be fair, it was balanced way worse than I the bike off. Way I, I haven't touched it, but uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. It's speeding up. Why is it speeding up? Who knows? So I didn't plan anything, anything honestly, for tonight. I'd had no topics. I'm <sighs> figuring out very quickly here. I'm struggling a lot with looking at the camera and everybody else yeah. at the same time. That's, <laughs> it happens. That, that's it a happens. challenge. Yeah, um, so we're kind of just winging it. Yeah, actually, yeah. If anybody, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> Waffles is here. Uh, Excellent. Vespas and Waffles. <laughs> I really hope Ian notices what T-shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> Giving him the old shout out. Mm-hmm. So if anybody in the uh, just throw it out to the chat to the chat if anybody's got any questions whatever blah 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 comments you just look at that and we just kind of um, ram her on like uh, like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I, I do know I do know that uh, that Matt has some new ingredients should we call them? Oh, we can like, we absolutely for this year? can. I think they would definitely yeah, qualify nice. as ingredients. That he's been working on. We actually got a couple that we're going to do away, uh, like a giveaway at some point. He's got some stuff put together. I yeah. don't. I don't have sticker packs or any 
any stuff to give away, but uh, Matt has hooked us up and we'll do some of that in a little bit. But uh, Matt, why don't you talk a bit about the new, the latest ingredient in the spaghetti bowl that is Ladle Sport ADV? So we have, um, well, these guys right here. Um, this is our uh, our low carb uh, rescue noodle, and it's a uh, it is. A, a three foot loop and what it's meant to be used for is choking around your crash bars just like that and it's so you can get farther away from the bike when you're helping pu pull somebody out of a mud hole or uh, or anything like that sometimes standing right sure. beside the bike is the hardest way to lift it up so this gets you away from the bike um, those are brand new on the website um, we've also got our, uh, 4,000, sorry, our 3000 pound versions, which are right here. Um, those are the ones that I actually had uh, brake tested. Um, they were tested to destruction and they're, uh, I think these ones are 250 grams. The, uh, the low carb version is, uh, 80 grams, uh, just due to different materials. Um, super lightweight, virtually pocket size um and they'll get you out of a jam uh we've also got uh the rescue noodles we've also got the adventure and uh soon to be released uh what is it enduro uh, low carb enduro spaghetti uh and those are just two different uh weight classes of uh toe straps and uh right now we've got the uh the heavy duty ones the three thousand pound ones which will basically tow a truck um and those are on the website now. Awesome. Uh, Good Life ADB put a question up in the chat. I know I'm not going. <clears throat> I am. Um, I've got my vacation stretched thinner than my boss would probably like for this year. But uh, I won't be there. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you're planning on going or not. No. Um, my wife and I aren't going on holidays until the last week of June and then we're, we're headed back to the Pacific Northwest. So nice. All the folks down there, um, you know, we'll be around. And Kurt, hey, you said you're going. Oh, sorry, I am Matt. going. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I, I just saw, there. I just saw my buddy Seamus sign in, um, a few minutes ago, uh, long tooth media. Hey, Seamus, we're going to go ride in the spring. We rode together, for the first time in 2019 uh, with Chris Birch on a big adventure uh, adventure bike uh, training course that Chris put on back in awesome. 2019. Yeah. It was Matt, a good you've time. Ridden with, uh, you've ridden with all the cool kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Chris Birch, Ever Ride. Um, Especially once he crossed me and you off last September. <laughs> <laughs> that changed everything. Yeah. Who is Chris Birch anyway? Um, he's... Uh, He's a Kiwi uh, who's, uh, well, I don't know much about his history, but he started as a trials rider. Um, he's done all of the all of the big enduro events. He's a, a Red Bull uh, athlete um, supported by KTM. Uh, he and Monica, his wife, and his daughter, Zoe, um, just great folks. They were amazing to meet. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like going back down to Utah to hang out with, with, uh, Tyler, um, nice. and the Everide channel. Um, just great people. Soul family is awesome. Very cool. Um, you might, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about the Easter giver. How was that? I haven't honestly, full disclosure. I haven't watched your full video yet. Oh, well, it's up on the channel. Watch it now. Critter Moto. <laughs> you can watch it now. Uh, yeah, the Easter Giver, that was the um, the, the third annual. Um, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but uh, Summer Hurst and uh, Kevin Fuzan of Up Every Road on uh, Instagram. Um, they're the organizers of it. They've been putting it on for the last three years now. Uh, it started off with a simple... Uh, little post on uh, on Facebook there. Hey, you guys want to get together on uh, Good Friday? Go for a ride. We'll call it Easter Giver. Boom. Uh, I don't know how many how many uh, riders showed up for the first one. 
but for this third annual, the third one, we had uh, 47 bikes with 49 riders show up. And uh, the Easter giver was uh, this year was all around through Lake Cowichan and Port Renfrew, basically the west side of the island. And uh, the ride was five and a half hours long, just a real, real nice leisure pace, uh, social ride, get together. And uh, I kind of look at uh, the Easter giver as the um, unofficial, unofficial opening to, uh, to riding season here. Uh, I mean, like we ride all year long, but that's when a lot of the garage bikes come out is after yeah. the Easter giver and away we go. And uh, yeah, Ian came down, Ian had a good time. Um, it was uh, mine and Ian's one year anniversary actually, because uh, he came down <laughs> last year for the first one. And that's when our little, uh, little bromance started. So uh, we actually didn't go and celebrate. I'm a little disappointed. I was expecting that's him to take uh, me out for dinner or something or, you, would, you know, you would think. Yeah, at least bring some flowers. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't know. But no, it's it's a good time, and uh, I suggest that uh, you know anybody that's um, uh, close to the Vancouver Island area, um, you know, just if you, if you have the opportunity to come out and hang out and ride, uh, island riders are are some of the coolest folks. <laughs> Thanks, are. Ian. They are, uh, and uh, they're everybody. Everybody's chill, laid back. Lots of cool stuff to see, and uh, yeah, it's just it's a really good time. It's a lot of fun. It couldn't have been a very memorable experience, Ian. Just saying. Like, if he doesn't remember it. Oh, um, right. He did take me out for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He bought dinner that night. I forgot. I forgot about that. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> it's, only so, been yeah. a, it's only been a year. I didn't think the newness would be wearing off so fast. Oh, I know, right? I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's that long distance thing, right? He's in Oregon. Yeah, he's, he's, I, got, I he's got Sean down there. And, you know, Sean's been True. really muscling in on my turf. And uh, I don't know. I got to have some words with him next time I see him. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Matt, you talk. Oh, she's in here. Sorry. You talked about. No, it's all good. You talked about uh, June and the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, we are heading. Plans. Well, we're trying no plans. So nice. we, oh, have awesome. a, we have a reasonable destination in mind, and that's just headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Where that is uh, or how far south that goes, we don't know. Um, we're going to try and do as much camping as possible, too. Um, but we do like, you know, the plastic camping in hotels. So I hear you. I'm not against nothing wrong. Either. Nothing wrong with that. Every now and again yep. for me. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Are you uh, are you going to do the coast the coast route again? Um, NW or so we did a bunch of the 101 last year, um, mm -hmm. trying to escape the heat that right. was inland last year. It was terrible, um, and Eastern Oregon was even worse. Um, I think we I think it was 40 or 42 degrees um, coming up into Burns and Hines last year, which was just way too much. Um, but uh, we're going to drop down into the U.S. Uh, probably in Montana and then okay. just start heading like we're going to get we're going to stay as close to the border as possible and then just work our way west um, and probably hit up a bunch of stuff in the on the Olympic Peninsula. Nice. And uh, and then circle back around and then how, how we're getting home. I don't even know. Right, we're, right. Uh, basic destination. That's about it. Oh, Sue's in the chat. Hey, Sue. We haven't met, but hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about you, Critter? Any plans? It's only outside of September. Oh obviously. gosh, yeah, no. Um, honestly, uh, honestly, September's event is is taking up uh, tons of tons of effort this year, tons of time. Um, I've got uh, I've got GL planned. I was going to do Tour Tech, um, but it just it, it's cutting too much into what time I need to get yeah. things ready. Um, and I don't know why, you know, like, like, um, last September, the event, uh, even though I was, you know, incredibly stressed out throughout the whole thing, it really, it, it came together quite well and, and, and almost dare I say effortless, but you know, it wasn't really effortless, you know, there was a lot of effort, but it just, it, it, it was fluid, right. It just flowed, um, this year with so many more, uh, sponsors, so many more attendees yeah. and, uh, 
simply adding just one more day um, is like, yeah, it's crazy, man. So I got um, a giant loop planned. Uh, then I'll have to come back and uh, get caught up on work schedules. That's another thing. Work's falling behind. Um, just simple construction life, right? You run into yeah. Uh, yeah. setbacks, delays, material products. You know, you open up a wall and it's, uh, you know, way worse than what you anticipated it to, to yeah. be. And so we have all those factors coming up. And, you know, I had my I had my summer completely planned. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And uh, it was pretty much about two weeks ago where I went, ah, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> so that those plans went right out the window. And uh, basically, it's um, it's uh, a giant loop and come back and uh, really focus on hammering down all of the final details for September. Um, you know, a big portion of those uh, details are, are are getting the the, the routes together, getting rides together and yeah. finding the tracks. Right. And with it being, um, you know, five hours from my place, uh, that's not something I can just go do in a day. I've no, got to that's a trip. leave on a Friday, yeah. spend the Saturday doing whatever, and then come back on the Sunday so I can go back to work, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty uh, pretty busy. Yeah, fair but enough. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. 100%. Yeah, Chris, I got to hand it to you last year. Um, as as chaotic, chaotic as you make it sound um, and as stressful as you make it sound, you were, you know, 100% there the whole time. It was just, uh, it didn't look like it was a problem at all. Like you were stressed out. It just looked like you were having a good time and everything was going the way it should. And it did. Um, but yeah, Great. hats off. Thanks. Hats well, off. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I have, have, to, so um, well. I have to tip my hat to, uh, to Sean and uh, Summer and Kevin. And uh, I'm sure a few others that I'm forgetting. Um, but the one that, that um, uh, sticks in my mind most was Sean, ADV Oregon, came up to me at one point and he just sort of grabbed me by the shoulders and he says, you just need to stop. You just need to stop and look, take a big deep breath and enjoy it because before you know it, this moment will be gone and you will not remember anything. So I did that. I stopped and I went and thankfully I remember some stuff. <laughs> you know, a lot of it is, is still a blur, but you know, I, I just remember that moment with Sean in particular. I really appreciated that. And uh, you know, and having Summer and Kevin there, um, I don't think I would have, uh, eaten the whole weekend without those two because uh, they would basically throw food at me and say, "Go eat now." Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, a lot of fun, and uh, I'm glad that um, you know, Matt. Thank you that uh, uh, you know that my stressness didn't come out, and uh, so I pulled that off. So that was good. That's another thing. <laughs> nice. Though know, I've got a pretty kind of busy summer it's a busy start and a busy end i don't know what the middle is going to look like yet ironically july and august which are two of the nicest months so i don't really have any plans it should look a lot like this oh well, it's here. definitely going to look something like that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. that exact <laughs> point of view but yeah no trips planned anyway yeah but june um, i'm doing uh sorry go ahead no no go ahead no i was gonna say june um uh, myself and a friend from work we're leaving and heading up north. We're doing an eight-day tour first with the Dual Sport Plus out of Ontario, which is a tour company. So we're doing an eight-day guided tour. So it'll be like hotels or cabins, meals, everything's looked after. Of the Yukon and Alaska, I don't know the exact route. I could look it up. But uh, it's like 70% dirt roads and 30% pavement. And when, uh, when we get through that, we're at the tour starts and finishes in Whitehorse and we're leaving Whitehorse and we're riding up the Dempster. Nice. All, all the way up the Tuck and then back and we haven't worked out all the details yet but then the plan is not sure if we're driving or like trailering the bikes like a certain distance or riding but like once we get uh, done with the Tuck trip like it's straight to Tour Tech for me. Yeah. And uh, Wow. I'm looking at trailer and the bike for some of this because if not, <laughs> if not, like I've I've been doing the math, like I'd be on the bike. I'm off for 30 days, so I have a month off. But uh, I'll end up on the bike for like 28 if I don't. 28 trailer. of those days, yeah. I don't trailer, yeah. It's, oh, uh, look out! So. And like 10, 12 hours at a time, or what? Yeah. So <laughs> well, what we're considering now is that uh, like 
just trailering the bikes to Whitehorse. I found a place up there I could store the truck and trailer, do our whole loop, right, and then uh, and then come back down, trailer the bikes all the way down to Turtec. So, but your GS, it's got the recliner seat, doesn't it? And, oh yeah, basically and massaging feature and yeah, the television <laughs> and you know you could do all that autopilot, the espresso machine. Yeah, speaking, <laughs> speaking of GS, and, yeah. It might be just rumors, Valkyrie. Might be just rumors. Oh, rumors! I'll be uh, I'll be twinning with one of the Oregonians there. It'll either be uh, Sean or Ian. Yeah, so, to be determined. Just going to the chat. Uh, Good life ADV uh, asks: uh, Anyone have plans for the NorCal BDR this year? Um, and not the entire thing. Um, I got to talk with uh, Chris and Nathan Fant actually. Um, just to get some info on sort of the easier sections. Um, we're looking at trying to do a little bit of off-road stuff this year um, and maybe do a couple sections here and there between Idaho, Oregon, and Washington BDRs and possibly NorCal. No, we'll see. Nice. What about you guys? Uh, myself, I'm not going to be doing the NorCal, uh, but there is talk um, with uh, joining Ian and uh, after Giant Loop, hitting the uh, Oregon BDR and the Washington BDR on my way back up, up home. So that would be my route back up home. <laughs> the Ladle Sport ADV mascot. The That's right. Chicken. The yeah. shouting chicken. The shouting chicken. No, I won't be doing the NorCal BDR either. There's ones. I haven't done any BDRs. There's a... Uh, some that are closer to the border for us that I'd probably scratch off first and yeah, fairly heavily involved up here now too, for uh, like with Epic GPS adventures yes. and our route planning and stuff too. So yeah, I yeah. want to check out a couple of those. My big plan was to try and check out a couple of those in July and August. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I understandably in the, in the coots and stuff in the, you know, Kamloops area, July and August are the hottest months of the year and very hot, not a lot of fun to be riding off road during that time, but it's really the only time I have to be able to take, take that in. But, uh, I've been checking out the site and uh, watching that almost weekly and seeing it develop. And I'm really looking forward to that Epic GPS stuff. That's pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah. I think it's a uh, long overdue. I'll yeah. Yeah. With the potential we have just in Western Canada alone for tracks and routes and yeah. oh we've got so yeah. much up here yeah yeah we don't i don't know if we really want to make it public though do we <laughs> uh, <laughs> we don't want to let too many people in that's right yeah oh yeah and ian's saying he's planned a super rad route to gl so um much uh this year will be much like last year uh i just followed ian the whole way and uh, I'm going to do the same thing this year. So I'll go down to uh, uh, Oregon City there, meet up with Ian, and then he's going to try and get me lost in the bush on our way down to GL. He's planning out some pretty epic stuff. Last year's ride was was totally epic, basically all off-road to get down to GL. It was sweet. It that was looked awesome. like a great time. Oh, nice. it was so much fun. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the company could have been a little bit better, but uh, the route, the riding and the route was awesome. Two out, not, three, two out of three is not, not bad. Yeah, yeah, not the first time I've heard that about Ian. So, <laughs> <laughs> good life will have you. Anytime you want to come up for a spin. Yeah, for sure. You'd like it up here. Yeah, but living in Arizona, you don't got to shovel sunshine. So, no, that's true. Although I have seen snow at the Grand Canyon in January, so it's not. Uh, good life. I don't have a 300. I have a 250. And yes, I will be riding the 252 GL. I ride the 250 everywhere. The 250 is my 890. My GS. Way more reliable. My T7. <laughs> okay. uh, long tooth to answer your question. Uh, yes. So for the Epic GPS adventures, like we're starting in BC, that's where almost our entire group is based out of. But um, yeah, next summer, definitely we'll have like an Alberta route or two released on the website for sure. Yeah, that'll be sweet. That'll yeah. be sweet. Hey, uh, Owen, um, Epic, you, when you're doing your routes, are you guys uh, taking into consideration the uh, the uh, TCAT, the Trans-Canada Adventure Trail, and trying to encompass any of that into your routes? 
Uh, we probably will by default. Right. Like it right. won't necessarily be intentional. Okay. Uh, you know, like if there's if there's parts where we end up kind of doubling over it or whatever, then fine. Right. And but yeah, we're not uh, not specifically looking at the TCAT for root ideas okay. and such. Okay. And we're relying very heavily on, uh, like, just on the community. Like, we're trying yeah. to keep it like a community-driven thing. So, like, we're really relying on people in the areas to, like, 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 let's go out and make roots. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I like, so, I like that. Uh, I like that uh, that sort of business model, if you call or or building model that you guys are doing, relying on on uh, you know individuals, ambassadors, or whatever to you know give you some roots and and build it as a big community type type thing, right? I like oh, that idea. Crowdsourcing Long works. It's 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 yeah, fun. yeah. Long tooth. If you uh, just go to the Epic GPS website, right at the bottom is my email. Shoot me an email, and we'll get in touch. Yeah, and the reason why I asked about the TCAT is because um, that's a yeah. uh, a uh, destination trip of mine that I am very sooner than later going to be taking. And uh, if you guys had your epics tied into it, then you'd be able yeah. to get uh, you'd be able to get more up to date feedback on on actually how the the road is doing, right? How the trail is doing. But yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and I mean, like we're <laughs> definitely learning as we go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the plan is to like for the roots in the areas. I haven't created like Facebook pages for some of them specifically yet, but it'll it'll again we'll rely on riders in the area, you know, the ambassadors and whatever else, just kind of if they're out for a ride and they notice that like, hey, there's a washout here or you know, there's a closure here for this reason, like kind of be pretty heavily reliant on the people riding the routes for updates. Yeah. Similar yeah. to like the ride BDRs. Yeah, yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. Only Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. So every ride comes with a beer, eh? It's nicer. <laughs> nicer. <laughs> we'll come with a double double and an apology. There you go. Sorry about that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> How many sponsors are you up to now for Get Lost Find Yourself for this year? Oh, for uh for Get Lost, we are at fifty nine. Uh, wow. 59, it's incredible. 59 companies and individuals. So um, companies, I mean, it's, it's amazing to have company sponsorship and uh, you know, not that one is more important than the other, but to have individuals, um, you know, take money out of their pocket and, and give it to the, the foundation, to the, to the, to the event. Um, yeah. That's, that just blows my mind. Right. Like it's, it's wild. So yeah, yeah I've got, um, to do all the social media shout outs, um, you know, I try to do one a day. So that's, that's like almost two months worth of, um, social media shout outs just for each company. <laughs> right. It's just yeah. like, Holy <laughs> smoke, come on. so yeah, but it's just, uh, the support has been, uh, has been just mind boggling, just blowing, blown, yeah, blown, you've, blown you've away. And a pretty impressive list there. Yeah. 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 And some big guys like Cardo, like came on and, you know, it's just, Holy yeah. smoke, really? Wow. And, I uh, I yeah. think it just it speaks volumes about the cause, and you know yeah I think it does not to get on a on a serious note but it 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 really is something that uh, you know doesn't have um you know a lot of uh, a resources and a lot of discussion about you know like yeah. it, it's it's really it's really kept behind closed doors and it's really kept kept um, personally silent kind of mm -hmm. thing, right? Like a lot of guys just hold it in and just truck on through their day. Right. So it, it's something that needs to, uh, uh, definitely needs to happen. Um, definitely needs to get out. And, uh, you know, um, when, uh, when I started this, it was, it was to create, I, I keep saying it, it sounds corny, but a safe space. Right. And that's what the event is. It's a safe space where we all can get together and we can just be ourselves. Uh -huh. And, you know, if sitting around the fire, if someone goes, man, I just cannot deal with shit, then at least someone else is there that can say, you know what, I can yeah. relate with that. And let's talk, you know, I got your yeah. back, you know, and, and just that, that uh, uh, camaraderie, that brotherhood, that, uh, you know, uh, community, um, like a lot of people went, went away from last year saying that, you know, they all gained family members, you know, like, that's, that's pretty wild, right? So Oh, absolutely. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, yeah. So it, it is, it's a cause that needs to be spoken about needs to be done and needs to be dealt with. 
Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. <sighs> oh, Crash, he's talking about his mail order bride. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at the chat. That's hilarious. <laughs> So those that don't know, uh, Crashy's mail order bride is his Kobe. I got that from the last comment there. I was okay. like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it Cove or Kove? Kove. Is it Kove? It is Kove. Yeah. Okay. There's been a couple guys on the internet that have been like pronouncing it Cove just to get just to get the interactions on the post. Yeah. Which which is okay, you know. Like, yeah, might as well try and trigger a few people. The best but, way to uh, get attention on social media is to start an argument. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. You want a post or video or something to pop off because it's getting lots of action? Talk about something controversial. Yeah, or or you know, accept feedback when you've never asked for it. Yeah, um, I'm speaking specifically of that one post from Kathy this week. Um, riding down that cobblestone road in Peru. And, uh, you know, it was like wet cobblestone. Nobody's going to enjoy that, even in a car. Um, and I was reading in the comments because I, you know, I commented quickly on the post like that just looks crazy. Um, but uh, I went back and looked at the comments the next day and it was just full of advice that nobody was asking for. I mean, you know, good to get traction on the post that way, but like nobody asked for this. Like, yeah, I'd I'd rather receive no comments at all than fill it with a bunch of crap. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Like if I get three comments on a post of mine, um, whether it's writing or uh, or business related, it I don't care. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, we had a question on the chat. I've got it up oh. on the screen there from oh, Susan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, will there be season, easy yeah. routes at the Get Lost Find Yourself 2024? There, there will be. Um, some of the routes will be actually, um, as Carl likes to say it, Miata friendly. So you'll be able to drive a Miata up it, and uh, it'll be it'll be more about the um, well, partially about the the route, the ride, but more about the um, epic destination to like one of the lake yeah. sides or something like that. So um, we don't want to go. We're, there'll be there'll be some hard routes, um, but intermediately hard. We're, we don't want to break anybody up there. No. So, um, yeah. and it, we it's did more that already. We don't yeah. want to have it again. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> no more. No more. <laughs> Done. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we're we're gonna gear the routes um, for for route planning for us. It's a little bit difficult because we all ride dual sports, right? And what I noticed last year is a lot of bigger bikes bikes showed up. And so when we're planning our routes, we have to get in the mindset of, of we're riding a 500 pound bike and we're not riding our little two fifties. Um, so we got to make them a little bit more, um, <laughs> Owen, we got to make them a little bit more big bike friendly. Uh, definitely make some, um, leisure rides, if you will, sort of destination rides. Um, but also have a little bit of, uh, challenging rides and stuff. Yeah. So that'll be fun. We will have, um, uh, lead rides. Um, now that is in capitals lead rides, not guided rides. They will not be guided. We do not have guides. We have a leader. You will follow the leader. You will follow that leader on your own, at your own will and get your own, your own peril, if you will. <laughs> so they are not guides, but we will have, we're going to try and have a bunch of those and sign up sheets. And then, uh, you know, people can get together and sign up on whatever ride sounds the funnest. And, and uh, check that out. One of the sponsors, um, the Scarlet Ibis, for the remote most remote pub on Vancouver Island. Um, one of their sponsorship deals was any rider who comes out during the event that rides all the way out there to have lunch, they'll get a major discount on their uh, on their lunch, on their nice. beverages, oh, and wow. also uh, receive an entry into uh, win in two nights accommodation, stay there at the. Awesome at their place. So that was, that was pretty sweet. It's, it's, it's a lot about trying to get people to explore the, uh, the North Island. Right. So yeah, long winded answer. Sorry, Susan, but there'll be a variety of, uh, a variety of routes. So they just, you know, I definitely have a little bit more off ride off road riding experience than my wife. Um, but the Hoosan caves, um, Oh yeah. 
and uh, it was Zabellos. Yeah. Um, those two spots definitely um, Miata friendly. Yeah. Um, and super easy ride. Um, and it's it's all at your own pace too. So it's yeah. just just brilliant. Yeah. You can you can go eight, you can go eighty miles an hour if you want to, but it's not advised because the scenery is so good. Yeah. And I haven't stayed in them. Just put that Canadian riders at the uh, comment up on the screen, but uh, yeah, she stayed a, there. His adventure huts look pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, when I was talking to the gang at, uh, at uh, Scarlet Ibis, they remembered her. They went, yeah, we had, we had, uh, she goes by uh, the Canadian rider. She was at your event. She stayed with us for a few <laughs> days after your event. I went, yeah, she did. So yeah, you're famous up there. You missed out, Sean. You missed out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, flat they, they were in search of a starbucks there's no starbucks up there <laughs> no good life's got a question here oh uh anything from garmin no nothing from garmin i um i didn't reach out to garmin to be honest so i didn't reach out to any of those guys and uh yeah maybe I could, really i didn't all, know all those names that have come on board have been yeah that- that's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, that speaks so much about like you and the cause, man. That's insane. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. I don't like. Um, yeah, out of those almost sixty, I think I've I've personally approached maybe a half dozen of them. So everybody else has seen my post and they approached me. That's incredible. And you yeah. got you got some big names on there too. Like yeah. you know, a giant loop in the adventure bike world. You got you got some big names on there. Yeah. What do you got in that bag? Yeah, what's in that bag, son? Well, it's it's my good my my giant loop possibles. Uh, uh-huh. Is this the one? Is this the one that slides into the Moscow Moto auxiliary? It pack? Absolutely. Is. Hey, 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 hey! I do gotta go. Want see, do we want to see what's in it? <laughs> what's in there? I don't know. Do we want to see what's in there? Oh, well, it's not a severed head. Okay, so. <laughs> We got alligator clips and an SAE connector. That's fair, especially if you're riding with anybody on a KTM. Yeah. Or a critter. <laughs> well, you gotta hey, have hey. you, you gotta have your pack of 100 zip ties. Absolutely. Yes. And just just I'm gonna turn this around and you won't see the instructions, but on the instructions, it says to maintain flexibility um, and continued performance, add five milliliters of water to the package. And let it sit there, um, because the product itself, which is what is it, uh, nylon, black UV, UV protected nylon, will absorb the water and actually maintain its malleability. So, so what happens a, if if you put like six or four milliliters in there? Well, I don't know, <laughs> but probably nothing. <laughs> so. Oh, well, that's a chain breaker. The, nice. uh, the Motion Pro chain breaker. What else could be in here? Oh, we're at a tubeless tire bike, so plug tools. More zip ties. Two different sizes at minimum. <laughs> oh, Sean, the mountain house zip ties. <laughs> don't boil the water Do not do stop and go air compressor now you know what the alligator clips were for and the uh, the adventure bacon tire plugs so that's that's what's in there one of my favorite uh Packable toolkits is the uh, the Linden Poskit uh, or Linden's organizer from Enduristan. Um, absolutely awesome. Nice. Yeah. Tire iron with a uh, twenty seven mil uh, socket on the or uh, wrench on the end. What else is in here? Holy crap! Um, this is everything. This is sockets, wrenches. Ratchets. Um, if you don't already have one of these, um, these come in various sizes. I'm going to hold this up to the camera. 
the no, NipX or these are phenomenal to have in a toolbox, in a tool bag, in your pocket, on any motorcycle. Um, I was introduced to these one of my trips to Utah, and it's just like I will never not have one. Um, worth every penny. It's 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 a do all sort of you know pair of pliers, uh, combine or not combination wrench. Uh, well, Owen will remember this a tum wrench. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. This one will grab something. I think it's like, what does it say? 1.25 inches is the largest fastener or largest opening that it has. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. But yeah, super excellent. And just thanks for stopping by. Good life. <laughs> See you later. Good life. <laughs> uh, thanks yeah. for dropping in chad oh uh, more zip ties i forgot about more <laughs> zip ties um you can never have too many some extra long ones but i don't think they have enough water in them nah, uh, they look like yeah. dehydrated zip ties yeah no one likes dehydrated zip ties <laughs> bald face buffoon <laughs> Kevin <laughs> be nice it's coming back with a vengeance like yes sep come September we won't even recognize him that's right in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it bald here and I'm just gonna grow it right out right down here I like it and then and then it'll be like my it'll be like my uh cruise control because when I'm riding, I'll just take the like sit back and uh, <laughs> drive the bike. You'll have to shave again if Kevin decides to sign the waiver this time, though. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. So, Kevin, you hear that? If you sign the waiver, Critter will shave again. It'll come back even whiter. It will. It will. <laughs> and, you know, that's what all the family were saying. They're like, oh my God, you're 10 years younger. Oh. And I'm like, oh my god, I feel ten years stupider. Yeah. I hate I, it. I keep the hair and beard pretty short. It's like an embarrassing <laughs> amount of white in my yeah. hair and beard if I grow it out. Well, you, now I find that hard to believe, Owen, because you're you're a number of years younger than Critter and I. And I know Critter and I are both in our fifties. Are you? Who's in your 50s? I'm 27 years old. <laughs> no. It's not what you told me before. I know. I'm <laughs> as old as dirt, dude. Oh, and I'm old, I'm, I'm old enough to be your father. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd have had me pretty young, but yeah, you're there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for uh, I feel bad for Kevin. I saw his comment there. He had to ride all day today. That's terrible. How unfortunate. I, know. I feel so bad for him. I'm still waiting for snow to melt off my patio, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what do you got for giveaways? Oh, what? giveaways. Well, giveaways. We've, We've got. got uh, well, we've got rock straps. No adventure bike is complete without rock straps. Oh, we lost Critter. Oh. We have lost a Critter. Oh, there he is. Got him. <laughs> I saw that comment just as I came back in. <laughs> Take away <laughs> Owen is Critter's father. And to answer your question, Kevin, in summary, I'll be back in September, but I'll be back. Which way are you going to go this time, Owen? You're going to go the same um, way? No, I'd like to do the Bellacula ferry this time, like go out that way. Nice. Take the Bellacula ferry across the island. That'll be cool. 
Yeah, yeah. All right, so I I dipped out. What did what did we have for a giveaway for Matt? So we got some oh. rock straps. Okay, how do we win them? I have no idea how <laughs> giveaways work on here. I honestly haven't got a clue. Um, I didn't get that far into my YouTube research today on how oh, to no. do this whole live stream thing. I probably should have started sooner, but I prefer to work under pressure. <laughs> okay, so, so let's let's do this. Okay, um, post up in the chat um, with how old you think Owen is. Closest oh. to the correct response wins a pair of rock straps. There right. you go. Random colors only. No one gets <laughs> to choose. Owen, are you okay with that? Yep. Let's oh. check out. Okay, so we got 39. Crashy, what the? What 41, you... 32, oh. 47. I think Crashy's winning here. Only not. <laughs> Anyone close yet, Owen? Yep. Oh. Oh, Nobody. you were typing. Oh, do we set the rule? Do we set the rule as like closest without going over? Oh, that's good. We're gonna Ooh. have to do. We're gonna have to do that. Yeah. 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 Unless someone gets it bang on. <laughs> <laughs> Pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pie pancakes. <laughs> Motorcycles and pie just doesn't have the same ring to it. It doesn't, Men does it? No. Mentality yeah. sometimes. Mentality. Vespas and waffles sound really good, though. I like that one. It does. It's got a good ring to it. I hate, I hate to announce this on national television. But I'm a French toast guy. Uh -huh. Is that uh, is that all the answers? I think that's everybody because there's what 14 people here watching. So did anybody nail it? Bang on, Kevin. Kevin, what did he guess? Kevin he? guessed 37 first, and then he guessed 37 and five months and three weeks, which is <laughs> <laughs> how does he know that? Which is actually like insanely close. I have no idea how he knows that. <laughs> Holy cow, how do you do that? <laughs> He's creeping your wow. Facebook, dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if I have my age on there. I must. So I look what Kevin wins. Nice. Kevin wins rock straps. Congrats, Kevin. Kevin, uh am I on Shoot Am me I a on DM Google? on Instagram, and I'll get this in the mail for you. Kevin, now I've got to verify what you did. <laughs> Are you going to stalk your own self now? I'm going to Google myself. <laughs> I don't know where he found it. No. <laughs> I think he's just a lucky guesser. That was very lucky. Yep. I thought 37 was lucky, and then when he came with the 37... <laughs> what did he say 37, five months and three weeks? And I was like, okay, that's or crazy. he's got a wicked memory. Did you mention anything about that last year at the at the event? Uh, my memory's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. He just said October 18th, 1986. He's right. You must have mentioned it at Gliffy <laughs> or at some point in time. Unless it's on your Facebook page. So that is that is my birthday. Kevin, you're freaking them out. Mark look it down. Your, mark it down in your calendars. I take all sorts of gifts. Okay. I'll put that down right now, October 18th. <laughs> How about some rock straps? I'll take October, rock straps. 1986, dude. Oh man. <laughs> well, now I see my Facebook. Me too. Geez, I was getting ready to graduate freaking high school. <laughs> I graduated in 2004. <laughs> 2004? <laughs> Colorful expletives. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think that's cool, though. I That's cool. I don't, I don't care how old anyone is. No. I just care how old I feel. 
Yeah. Yeah. There, I have never, I have yet to find a day where I felt younger than 37. Yeah, I typically feel probably, I don't know, mid-20s most of the days, except for in the morning. Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's funny that you mentioned um, the trails being uh, Mazda Miata capable. Um, my wife and I both ha used to have Mazda Miatas um, when I was still racing, um, doing the autocross stuff. And... Uh, I only felt my age um, getting in and out of the Miata. That was the only time. So funny Miata story. A funny Miata story. Um, when I rode the Continental Divide, um, we all met in Calgary, myself and the four other guys that went, uh, just to meet each other. I had met one of them before, the other ones I'd never met. The guy that had organized the trip, he um, he's a racer, and he's got a couple of race cars, and he was planning on taking us out to the new track down north of Calgary, Rocky Mountain Motorsports. So that was fine. He was planning on taking us out in his Dodge Viper, right? We were pretty stoked, but it started to rain that day, and uh, tires and the car just didn't, didn't do well in the rain on the street, so he brought his Miata. I have never at any point thought that the end of my life would occur in a Mazda Miata, but for three <laughs> laps around that racetrack that day, I thought it was possible. <laughs> Sounds but awesome. It was incredible what a stock vehicle could do in the hands of a professional driver. Yeah. I was very, very, very impressed. Yeah, you mentioned your uh, your Miata there, there, Matt. I knew that from listening to the um, yeah uh, pod takes there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's funny. You and I have have quite a few sim, uh, similar paths because isn't um, that weird? Yeah, I I used to you know unofficially race my Mazda 1300 in in sort of like a unlicensed underground rally. Um, I guess organization here on the island, and we used to race those things on city streets, like totally not legal but you know way before fast and the furious was a thing but we used to <laughs> zip those things and i used to push everything i could out of that little 1300 cc motor and just give her give her give her give her the beans so that, it's funny to hear that that, that you were sounds... into autocross and stuff and you know i was probably yeah. we're very close in age and you were probably doing mm -hmm. autocross at the same time i was doing my unsanctioned rally races <laughs> so yeah. we we would I... race from uh, nanaimo to victoria or nanaimo to duncan and then duncan and back and you know, wow. but we couldn't take highways. We'd have to take side streets and, and, uh, you know, avoid the police if you can, and, you know, try and be, you know, as safe as possible. A lot of our races would, would happen, you know, two, three, four in the morning and away we go and wrong, just go. So yeah, it was kind of funny. And then, that, and then you uh, have the, uh, you have the music tie-in as well, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah so that's right. We that's spent pretty, some time DJing. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. well. Both DJing for a while. Yeah. It yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. And you and you cook. You do all your cooking and stuff. And uh, I spent many years in restaurants. And look out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're like the perfect catch, right? We are. Absolutely. Yeah. Owen, snag us up. <laughs> yeah. Well, Owen, unfortunately, isn't uh, isn't privy to these things. Um, oh, I am. Contrast. Yeah. So... The critter, this is a different flavor. Um, oh, which this one's is that? this is this is this is something new. I was I tried it for the first time. It's a Caribbean jerk. Oh, is the, is the flavor so? Yeah, so these, for those these ones watching are... at home, uh, Matt's nuts are tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the best nuts I've had in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. So many inappropriate jokes. Yes, I know. Yeah. I was trying to set them up so you guys could knock them down, but you guys didn't even go there. Come on. What kind of podcast is this? Well, what do you do, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you crack another beer. That's what you do. Yep. Is that one of the, uh, the red trucks? Yes, sir. Red truck Northwest IPA. Nice. 
It's good stuff. Uh, another sponsor, by the way, for uh, Get Lost. Saw that. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sue. <laughs> Can confirm. Hmm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Where exactly have Matt's nuts been? Nobody. Uh, they. So um, I don't. I don't see Josh in the comments from uh, from, from uh, MVDBR uh, Enduro in Australia. Um, I actually just got this in the mail yesterday. It was perfect that it that it arrived. Uh, this well, stubby cooler or cozy as we call them here in North America. Um, but, uh, I, my nuts have been as far away as Australia. So does that answer your question? <laughs> does, uh, long tooth has got a question here. So get lost while yourself is on the Island. Yes. Yes, it is. North Island. Yep. North Island up by, uh, Port McNeil area. Yeah. How many, how many tickets are left critter? None. <laughs> <laughs> this year sold out in under 24 hours. Um, if you're long tooth, if you're interested in it, um, your best bet is to go to, uh, the website, uh, crittermoto.com, go to the get lost, find yourself page, go down to the bottom of that, fill out the waitlist registration. Uh, even if you don't get in this year, what will happen is you will be on the email list and those on the email list will get notified first when tickets go on sale for next year. Uh, so it's a sort of a, a a quick way to get in there and uh, and you know be notified before everyone else because last year uh, ticket sales didn't go public this year ticket sales didn't go public last year was uh, just under seventy two hours this year sold out in just under uh, twenty four uh, so look out and this year's attendance is uh, ninety four individuals ninety four people. And it will occupy your September's for like the near future once you go. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Do now, are we keeping track or are you keeping track? I should say of the farthest uh, distance covered to get to the event. Not that it, not that they're going to win anything or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, just like you know, like hey, check what check out what this guy did. Um, yeah, I should. I can, and I can easily do that um, just by looking, going back through the emails for uh, registrations and stuff. So I can easily do that. Last year, uh, we had a couple of guys that were coming all the way from Utah uh, that unfortunately canceled at the last minute. You know, life happens, family happens, uh, and they would have been our furthest, our furthest, uh, you know, travel. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see. I'm just going through the list right now yeah I, we've got a couple of people coming from 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 quite a distance to get there nice. so yeah 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 it's pretty good long tooth it is an amazing time it is a fantastic time it's a great weekend such a good weekend yeah. how long until good gliffy outgrows windy waters critter that one's for you Oh, how long before? Yeah. Hmm. Well, what's amazing. So Windy Waters, when I first came up with this, uh, when Kevin, Kevin is the one that sort of spearheaded because we were riding one day and uh, uh, we were on the, I think it was a Thanksgiver. And, uh, you know, my video had come out about my, my suicide attempt and everything. And, you know, then I started promoting Heads Up Guys and, uh, you know, as a, as a resource for men's mental health. And and Kevin said to me, we should we should, you know, do an, uh, a ride for your event for our, or for your charity. And, you know, he was he was thinking like a one day event. And from that, I kind of went off like like the Roadrunner. And next thing you know, I've got a weekend event. I've got a campground. I've got all these sponsors da, 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 and, you know, just nuts. And what had happened is I knew that, uh, you know, to bring anybody to the island, my love of the North Island, I knew everyone else would enjoy that as well. So I knew I wanted to get North Island. So I, I started trying to find places in the North Island where everyone could go. 
And, you know, there's, there, there is free camping up there in North Island uh, for service sites, but it's first come first serve. And so chances of, of securing a spot like that for a number of individuals, good luck. It would, it would be like the, a caravan, pardon me, caravan event, always wandering. And uh, I happened to come across Windy Waters and, you know, I emailed her and I said, look, I want to hold this event. This is what we are. We're a bunch of adventure riders. Uh, last year's event was 50 of us. I said, there's 50 of us. We want to come just spend the weekend. Um, this is what we do. And the reply back I got was, well, because I said a bunch of motorcyclists coming up for a camp out. She's like, well, I don't know. And, you know, she's thinking, you know, motorcycles, leather clad, you know, whiskey, beer, loud and obnoxious music, burnouts and everything. <laughs> so I had to get back to her and say, no, no, that's that's not what we're about. We're adventure riders. We're more stewards of the forest than anything. And we just want to come up and enjoy the beauty of the island. And uh, anyways... This is a very long answer, but um, she uh, she got back to me. Uh, I sent her some links to some videos about what we're about. I sent her a link to Heads Up, guys, where this is what we're who we're raising money for. And um, she got back to me and says, "Yeah, let's let's do this." So she got in, and not only was she like, "Yeah, let's do this," but she was in like all in. Like, what do you need? What do you need me? What do you need from me to make this happen? So in answer to your question, how long till Gliffy out, out grows Windy Waters? Um, it would be, I guess the answer would be Windy Waters will grow with Gliffy because we're already carving out new campsites and new air and establishing, taking over more of her land and changing everything. Like she's right in. Um, we have a, a, a work party planned. Um, we're building a permanent structure, a permanent cookhouse, cookhouse structure for Gliffy. That's on, on her, on her. And she's like, yeah, I'll pay for that. Okay. <laughs> we're coming up. Absolutely. So yeah. So the arrangement is we'll come up and build it. And, and you pay for it. She says, absolutely. So Michaela uh, from Windy Waters has been an absolute uh, angel. And, um, you know, because of her, her generosity, her support and everything that she's done, uh, we'll stay there as long as we possibly can. And, you know, yeah, hopefully we never outgrow it. The, well, the thing is also in answer to that, Gliffy will never get um attendance wise like tour tech we will always keep it um small and intimate because that's that's the power of the event yeah. um you know if we start exceeding numbers of you know like 300 400 500 attendees um where's that real intimate connection it, it's lost right so we'll keep it small everybody can really connect and uh support each other and you know sorry long-winded long-winded answer <laughs> Don't get me don't get me talking about the event. I will just go 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 go. Yeah. <laughs> Owen throws. Right. Oh, there he is. There we go. <laughs> yeah, everybody kind of glitched out there for a second. That's because I was talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Matt's glitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were just playing, oh, were you? <laughs> <yeah. laughs> okay, you got me. Yeah. What else do we have here? We need more events out like that, like oh, that Damon's out here, here in Lowly, Alberta. Another comment from from uh, Seamus Longtooth. Um, Seamus, I you're a hundred percent right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know you're starting to see uh, you're starting to see more pop up. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the the Alberta Dual Sport World. Oh, rendezvous! I think you're talking about one. Um, I've also sit down south. Uh, I'm having a brain for ADV Riley and yeah, Chaparral. ADV Riley is trying to do some, do some stuff. He's yeah, a, ADV. He, yeah. So him and Long Range Moto, they've got uh, they they've got two events started this year. So one's for super small bikes. Yeah. So think like TW 200 or smaller Grom. bikes. Yeah. A Grom, something like that, like a like yeah. a mini moto weekend. And the other one is for like the bigger dual sports and the adventure bikes. And I am going to try and make it to that one. The big one. Yeah. I was yeah. going to try and make that, uh, that mini one. He sent me out an invite as soon as he found out I had the, uh, the XR 150. 
And he's like, oh, dude, you should bring this to this event. And yeah. he sent me the link and everything. Oh, that would be so much fun. But I don't think I can make it. But yeah, ADV, uh, Riley, he's he's trying to get stuff going down there for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's uh, he's Chaparral as well. Uh, one and the same. And uh, Chaparral is his, I think his store. Like he's trying to open up a, yeah. a store with Chaparral, right? He's trying to do a bit of a bike rental thing down there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I like for that, guide uh, services and bike rentals. I like that uh, that logo Chaparral has. That's a, pretty a good nice, one. very nice logo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, oh. I think I think I know the guy that did that for him. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. We've talked a couple of times, Riley. Yeah, I am. He's pretty cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, he's tied in with uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Range Road Moto. Blake. 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 Uh, that's right. Yeah, Range yeah. Road Moto, yeah. Yeah. His uh, his Winter Moto Camp video that dropped today was pretty funny. I haven't watched that, but he's, oh, yeah, he's a videographer. It. He's that's yeah, what he's, he does. He's good. So he's good. He's yeah. very very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't drop videos often, but when they do, they're good and they're they're a good video. And uh, yeah, just he um, I've watched them before, and and this one uh, stood out because he had um, uh, humor dialogue in there. Like he he put in some jokes and stuff, right? And it's like. It's kind of funny. It was it was good. It's worth a watch. You should see it. Watch it. Yeah, it's definitely top on my list to watch. Yeah. His jokes are probably better than mine. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever have any jokes. Ever. Never. No. Mr. Mr. Glitch. Yeah. <laughs> the beer that keeps going and going. There you go. <laughs> just been drinking the same one mm -hmm. i'm the only one here with like a transparent glass so like it you know yeah i like that this is a good looking glass is that the one you did your little reel on it is yeah it's actually that, an american the, whiskey the shatterproof one or the yeah. the clink proof one yeah 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 and your uh your videos on your 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 whiskey collection like guys if you're watching like check out his whiskey collection it's pretty freaking impressive if you did want to, yeah, it's, it's, I'm here for the whiskey. It's, uh, it's my winter hobby. I'll call it. <laughs> yeah. That's what you got to do on pr promote yourself. Just get it out there. Put it all out there. That's just a fun page. That's just a fun page. Yeah. And at this I'm, point, I'm liking it. I've almost given up on like the, the whole not giving up. I'm still going to post on Instagram, but nothing seems to work on that algorithm anymore, man. No. I'm, so, no. yeah. I'm no. just now I'm just like, whatever. All these platforms, they never, they never, there's no rhyme or reason to it at all. No. At all. Like yeah. my growth is just like, what? Whatever. And then I look at it and I'm down five and then I'm up five yeah. and I'm down. I'm like, what is going on? You just, you can't, I don't know. I don't know. You just, you just have to, uh, you know, if you're passionate about it, just keep on doing it. Yeah. Keep creating if it's what you enjoy to do and 100%. you just do it for the enjoyment. Right. So I am going to try and get more on here this year. Right, on the old YouTubes. My wife just sent me a question, um, asking why does her bike look so much smaller than my bike? And the Triumph is hers, and I've got the Super Tenere. And my response to her is because it is smaller. That the, <laughs> there's a definite size difference. Between <laughs> yeah, it's not the angle. Um, it's getting started jokes. Yeah, it's just different. I don't think she appreciates the response. Ah. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Long Q says the rendezvous. Is, is that the one you were talking about going? Yeah, it's Alberta actually a decent size event in Alberta. Oh yeah, yeah. The dual sports yeah. stuff go. Yeah, they've had uh, they've had some pretty big names as far as vendors. Oh wow, show up, show up for that. Yeah, yeah. I think last year was uh, last year they had the KTM uh, demo crew show up. Oh cool. Uh, I wasn't able to make the event. Um, and then uh, the year before that, um, actually, actually, uh, 2019, I've got the jersey from that event. This was probably the craziest rendezvous. Um, but, uh, these guys were there. Oh yeah. Uh, nice. From, from, uh, from the J.A. Pan company. Um, 
yeah. Uh, but they were, the demo fleet was there in 2019, and uh, this was uh, this was the jersey we got. This was a one time deal um, that everyone got. These were these super cool jerseys. Um, that was an awesome time. Uh, I tore this jersey. Uh, this I tore the sleeve riding with Chris Birch, um, <laughs> doing some crazy stream crossings. I think Seamus remembers those if he's still here. Um, he's still here. Yeah. Oh, he lost his jersey. <laughs> Down in the wrapper a couple in weeks ago. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Perfectly preserved. Ready to yeah. go out there and get dirty. Yeah, the rendezvous event. Um, I've been there twice. Um, other years it just hasn't uh, worked out. Um, I only started going after they moved it. It used to be in, uh, Macklin, Macklin, Saskatchewan in like, you know, like the dual sport Mecca of Saskatchewan. Um, but wait, it was a, it was wait, a, wait, it was a yeah, what, yeah, I was, so was going to say Saskatchewan wait, has a Mecca for anything. I was like, what? Apparently, <laughs> apparently, apparently Macklin, Saskatchewan is the, is the Mecca for dual sport riding. But wow. it was actually chosen because of location. And there was a bunch of people coming from Saskatchewan, and a bunch of people from Alberta. So it was just sort of this little tiny event. Um, but then they found a hall um, just outside of Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. And uh, they managed to be able to have more people. So I think the event is capped at 100 attendees, which is perfect. Um, it supports the, the Alberta Dual Sport.ca website and just all of that stuff. It's just a good time. It's, it's uh, right. two nights, you know, sort of two and a half days of, uh, you know, uh, campfires, uh, a pig roast and and riding. And uh, yeah, just a great time. Yeah, I haven't made it to it yet, but it's, uh, it's on the list. I know there's been some changes with, uh, with everyone running the event. Um, and the website this year. I won't speak to what's been going on uh, because it's not my place, but no. I don't know what's happening with the event this year. Um, but uh, from what I've seen, registration and whatnot is coming later on. And if you are not, if you're in Alberta um, or if you're outside of Alberta and you happen to join up at albertadualsport.ca, um, you will get notification of when all that stuff is going on. It's happening in August this year, um, in between a whole bunch of other events that are happening um, in this part of North America. We'll say, um, yeah, it's it's just a good time, a good pig roast. Right on. <clears throat> we have stuff like that in in uh, BC. I know we don't really have anything kind of like that on the island. Like no real big dual sport adventure meetups with vendors and anything like that but what about sort of like uh interior bc oh and you you might know more than me uh i don't i've never oh. i was never a big event guy i actually no. I, I really haven't been doing this for that long either so oh well you fooled me i thought you were an old hat at this so that's what i'm that's what that's the goal is fake <laughs> until I make it, right? that's right <laughs> So yeah, no, it, it's, um, I know we went to the, uh, uh, dual sports show, uh, summer, Kevin and I, uh, put on by sea to sky, uh, dual sport and, uh, they're based out of BC. Um, so it looks like they're trying to do something. That was a really good turnout. It was standing room. Yeah, only. It was a phenomenal turnout for that. Yeah. 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 It was, it was actually almost too many people, uh, for the venue they had picked, but, uh, again, another one of those events where they have uh, suppliers and dealers and, you know, vendors there, uh, those kind of things. Right. So like a, like a meet and greet motorcycle show, like we had the Vancouver Island motorcycle show come uh, this year uh, for the first time in four years. Um, but what I found ever since I've gotten into uh, dual sport is uh, a real um, lacking uh, in the adventure and dual sport world in the, in the VI motorcycle shows. Now I know it was different. It looked different. Anyways, I will watch your post for the Calgary and Edmonton shows. It looks like they had more of a adventure dual sport focus at those shows. Whereas Vancouver, we had two, it was at the, at the airstrip. So we had two airplane hangers uh, set up and one third 
was basically off-road of one hanger. So we had one full hanger and two thirds of another hanger, all street, Harleys, uh, crotch rockets, just street, 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 street. Right. So, um, it's, in, I, I would be interested to find out where more of the off-road adventure, uh, meetups and, uh, shows and events are. So, yeah, the, uh, the Calgary and Edmonton show, like it was very, very divided. Like you walked into the hall and it was like the left side had, uh, I won't say a lot, but that's where all the adventure and off-road stuff was. Mm -hmm. And the right side was like entirely Harley Davidson. Right. Entirely to the point like they in Calgary, they actually had a DJ on like a 12 foot platform. Like, (laughs) yeah, a cowboy hat, big fur jacket. Yeah, it was kind of this is the strangest thing. I I just don't get it. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't talk much. Actually, my brother just bought, uh, what was it, a 1994 um, Harley Davidson uh, Ultra Glide. Um, he found it used at a dealership, single owner. Um, for those that like them, it's it's a beautiful bike. Absolutely. Um, does it have two wheels? Yes, it checks that box. Perfect. It's a bike. You know, we can be friends. So. Every bike comes with a different smile. Yeah, Ian. I don't know if you're still here, but uh, have yeah, I just great, read that he's he's up. Great sleep on the road, buddy. He's doing the driving thing. He is. I don't miss the driving thing. I never did the driving thing. I w- always thought I would like the driving thing. I grew I really, up doing really it. Like... But oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, my yeah. father was a long haul truck driver. I grew up in the bunk of a tractor trailer. Oh, cool. A lot of good memories there, but never yeah. got into it myself. It's probably better that way. <laughs> if you had to ask my father, yeah, it was definitely better that way. Right. All right. Before this thing gets too long, Matt, uh, what else you got there for giveaways? Um. Well. Oh. I, I at short notice, I got a sticker pack in my hand. Um, it's got some some vintage, uh, Ladle Sport ADV stickers like that one. Vintage, uh, classic. Yeah, vintage. The company's been around, or been, been trying to do this for like four years. Um, <laughs> those are the first stickers. Um, we've got some uh, MV DBR Enduro stickers. A couple of those. Um, some Ladle Sport ADV shouting chickens, of course. Those are important. Yeah. Um, aha. Yes, the ride right. Avoid head-ons, BDR sticker. Those are good. Um, Health performance brake hoses, always important to have those. And, Excellent uh, brake hoses. Yeah, brake hoses I've got a wicked sticker pack here. Um, I think there's one, two. There are, there's 12 stickers in this sticker pack. Um, I don't know how anyone's going to win it but it's there. It's in my hands. Okay. okay. Skill testing question. All right. And if you followed my Instagram or me on social media, you'll know. If not, that's where you'll find the answer. <laughs> what was the bike that I had before I bought my Africa twin? Oh, that's a good one. I know Wait. the answer. Don't nobody's gonna pee it, like DM me or for the for the response. I, I won't do it. <laughs> As we hear his phone starting to go off. <laughs> ping, <background>. ping, ping. <laughs> Somebody knows. I'm sure. Yep. We uh we have a winner, just like that. Sean? Yeah, he got Sean, it right. <laughs> ADV Oregon, yeah. Sean gets a sticker pack. Look at that. Sean probably gets extra stuff in the sticker pack. So, yeah, so CRF 450L was the first bike I ever bought. It was in 2019. <laughs> was that your first bike ever, Owen? Yep. Really? Yep. You learned how to ride on that thing and everything? Yep. Really? Oh, okay. I came along, uh, I don't know, I picked up a bike pretty easily. 
Like I didn't struggle with that. But, right. Uh, yeah. I figured out very quickly that it wasn't uh, the bike that I wanted for the trips that I wanted to do. Sure. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> Still trying to spell. <laughs> That's hilarious. Kathy's been all over the world, eh? She yeah. has. Are you still in? You're Holy still in Peru? Smokes. And uh, yeah, Matt's wife is not the only one in the background here. My wife just reminded me that she was the one that got me into riding. And 100% credit to her. She absolutely was. Really? She, she grew up with an older Kawasaki, and I should have listened to her. Yeah. I hope she's not recording this, but uh, like, <laughs> I should have listened to her years ago and bought a motorcycle sooner. Sean, it was a hell of a starter bike. It was a, uh, it's a pretty quick lessons. I got, I, I don't know why I bought that bike for the first bike. It was probably from somebody on YouTube. Um, then I was always a Honda fan. I've had Honda quads and stuff before. So, you know, like they're, they're reliable, right? Like that's what they're known for. But, uh, she's watching. Oh, April. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Hi, Mrs. Owen. She'd probably prefer you call me Mr. April. Okay. But. Mr. April. <laughs> <laughs> Atta boy. <laughs> but yeah, I got the. I bought that bike and I I did a trip. I took the truck. I had no idea what I was doing. I left the like from the Nordeg area in BC, if you're familiar with that area, or Alberta, sorry. And uh, yeah, did a trip up the car, the Continental Divide, headed north, and I was I was in over my head farther than I knew. <laughs> if I, if oh, I had have ran into like any problems or anything, then like I was done. I don't I couldn't fix a flat. I couldn't. Oh no! I had more than enough gas, and yeah. But luckily enough, nothing went wrong. I did learn very quickly <laughs> on that trip that uh, you get what you pay for when it comes to camping gear. Quite often, right? I don't. Yep. I don't recommend anybody go to Cabela's and buy like a sixty dollar mattress and thirty dollar uh -uh. sleeping bag. It's not going to work. Uh -uh. But uh, learned a lot that trip, and uh, yeah, here we are, four years <laughs> later. Awesome. To it two motorcycles later yeah so based on what kathy has said here uh owen i'm changing your contact info in my phone <laughs> all right mr april done hold on how can i you need to change your name on screen i was gonna try to i'm not an expert in this uh stream yard stuff yet hit the three dots by your name three dots by my name in your little box and then it'll say edit name and headline see like this i just changed mine <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so she rides too she's uh she's the one that supports all my ridiculous ideas and bike trips here so she's got an indian scout and a bmw 750 gs so oh nice nice a scout and a gs yeah that's awesome so you guys do long trips together at all or uh we did a trip down into montana last year uh -huh. um did the road to the sun gone for three or four days went well yeah but uh, there will be more yeah know, yeah for sure oh that's I cool got, uh, got some crash bars out there to go and to go on hers so we'll uh get into some dirt roads and and uh yeah kathy 100 percent. yes kathy 100 percent. absolutely won't be this year but uh yeah we'll have to make it happen for 2025 yeah absolutely that'd be great it'd be great to see more gals out there so crash bars you gonna put that on the scout then <laughs> <laughs> no crash no. bars and knobbies on the scout come on <laughs> it would look pretty sick it would but uh sean to answer your question no she's not coming in september unfortunately but uh let's make it happen for 2025 yeah so critter can mark mark me down for two tickets okay already done 
<laughs> there, done. Yeah. <laughs> Two tickets. You already have a, a like a, a standing like spot. Like one's already <laughs> just done. Just move it into just a rolling spot into. That's right. Year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? Backing up on the chats there, taking a look. Yeah, doing the same. Yeah, I'm not used to this uh, um, sort of screen view because I'm I'm in uh, a Streamyard rather than being on YouTube. Yeah, same here. Yeah, this, oh, was, okay. yeah. this was I've the first it. time I'd done it. Period. But it's very it's user friendly for anybody wanting to do it. I, I'd recommend it. Yeah. Except for doing, um, oh, I can do a virtual background. Except for doing uh, giveaways, I don't. I haven't figured that out yet. I don't know how that works. There, I just but, put myself in a lodge. Nice. Ooh, yeah, there's right. there's actually a lot of custom things you could do with it. <laughs> I don't like that though. <laughs> you could play us a tune on the piano there. Okay. Yeah. No musical talent here at all. <laughs> I wish I did. I've been trying to teach myself how to play uh, guitar for, well, ever since I was 14, I guess. And I pick it up and, you know, I, I know all of my major chords, A, B, yep. C, D, E, F, G, all of those. I know how to do them all, but it's combining this hand with this hand strumming. I cannot, for the life of me, do that. Just practice patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. I don't know, but but, then but just, yeah, put me <laughs> yeah right. But if like... you put me in front of a, a deck with some mixers, I can beat mix the hell out of it. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm, I'm with Critter on this one. Yeah, we need to get some yeah. decks to yeah. the island in September. I was no, uh, no, I was getting pretty pretty happen. known for. Uh, <laughs> I was getting pretty known for beat mixing all of my 80s tunes because being an 80s kid, right? I was very familiar with 80s tunes and and the RPMs and the beats for the all the songs. And I would just meld them all in together and just and and now it's funny because uh if you subscribe to Sirius XM, they have this the first wave has the Saturday night uh dance party. Yeah. And it's pretty much what I was doing when I was DJing. <laughs> so right. it's like, ah, that's what I was doing. Come on. But yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Critter on the guitar and flapjacks on the drums. <laughs> be like a, yeah. a modern, a modern day in sync. Maybe. No kidding. No kidding. Well, Ian is Ian is a is a big old heck of a drummer, apparently. So um, I forget it now, but oh man, I found his original YouTube channel. Um, oh crap, what was it? He was he was actually kind of embarrassed that I posted it on one of his lives. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, Ian, is this you? And he's like, Yeah, that's me. Shh. And kind of <laughs> quickly passed the comment, right? But it's him and his band when he was younger, and he's like a heavy metal band and just <laughs> going to the thing oh, i wish i could remember what it was you gotta you gotta try and find that so i'm gonna have to look for it yeah we'll at see. uh at gliffy this year we'll have to get him on drums and uh we'll get some other musicians there and, and we'll put on a, a band the get lost band it was the first instrument i ever learned how to play it was the drums i tried to learn a lot of different instruments <laughs> yeah yeah i just can't do it can't do it. My dad was a phenomenal guitarist. My brother can play by ear like nobody's business. All of my daughters are very musically talented. They're above their grade level in all of their music lessons, and they can just. Nice. But me, nope, nope. I got my <laughs> I got my acoustic, and my electric, sit in my room. I pick them up every now and again. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> can't yeah. do it. Mm. So I just go plinky plinky plunk. Yeah. Uh, to answer your question here, Sean, I can play. So I I can play the drums. I can play the guitar. 
Um, I can fumble my way through bass guitar. I've done it before. It's not pretty, but like I can get away with the basics. I'm not good, but uh, that's the extent. High school, we used to we used to play in band competitions and stuff. Myself and a few buddies. Oh, Kathy's got the cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> There's never. I, enough I could cowbell. do that, and I could probably do the triangle too. So she yeah. can have the cowbell. I'll do the triangle. We're gonna get a band together here. Long tooth, hundred yeah, percent. Always, yep. always more cowbell. I recently um, sold a bass guitar that I bought um, because of a dream I had, uh, where I was, <laughs> I was like, not the world's best bass player, but I was a really good bass player in this dream, and so I'm like, I can do this on a budget. And I'm going to buy a bass, going to buy an amp, and going to buy some lessons. And I was doing lessons online, and I tried my best for, I think, six months. And recently sold the bass. Actually, no, not recently. But a year ago, I sold the bass. And Chris, you might remember a band by the name of Slash and the Bleeding Hearts. Uh-huh. Um, so at my, at my day job, um, I worked with the bass player from Slash and Bleeding Hearts. And they've recently got back together and are doing a bunch of shows here in Edmonton. And uh, anyway, he bought my, the bass guitar that I had because he had recently had some, had some hand surgery and was, was struggling with a standard neck. And the bass that I had had a slightly smaller one. The action was like super loose. Right. And that's the guitar that he plays gigs with now. Oh, that's pretty awesome. It's literally like a $500 bass. His sound man can't get enough of it. He said it sounds awesome. <laughs> and yeah, so my bass is kind of famous now, but well, I can't, and, I can't play it for shit. So. And through connection, you're famous now. You're Still your bass, like, though, yeah. Member. Take, take yeah. credit for that. You're basically yeah, roadie. Right. So <laughs> basically it's, roadie at this point. I don't disagree. It's kind of cool to see pictures of it still um, when he posts up a gig shots from... Uh, on Facebook, but you know, it's just like, I, I, I've, I've helped the band keep going. Otherwise he would have to retire. So I'm okay with that. There but you go. Sorry, Eugene. I don't listen to the music. <laughs> it's, it's just not my thing. There you go. Owen. I'm here for the whiskey. That's his other Instagram. Go sub. As he walks away. <laughs> there. Trying to fix some of that background glare that was going on back there. Oh, well. I need to work on my background. I know that. It's a, it's a blank slate right now, but there's so there's room for improvement. So this... Well, this is camo netting, uh, desert sand camo netting from Amazon. Um, I actually bought it for a, a setup at the Edmonton Motorcycle Show, I think 2019, 2018 or 19. Um, I was asked to put the booth together for AlbertaDuelSport.ca, so I bought that, and I still have it. So it's covering all the junk on the shelves in my garage. You still have? <laughs> yep. You still have yep. what? The camo netting. What that's, camo netting? That's this stuff hanging in the background behind the bikes. Oh, it's, it's being lit up by this. So, so camouflage. Well, yeah, you can't see it. It's, it's, it. it's doing its job. <laughs> I got you, bye. <laughs> I've that's only my, had two tall boys, but I'm three sheets to the wind. So it's my <laughs> bad dad joke for the day. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I normally have I have all my stuff set up in the critter den the camera and everything, but uh, the critter den right now is full of glyphy stuff and motorcycles. So there was no room. So I'm in the office right now. You know, just hung up some posters. We I've go. been working on like some office space, like for stuff like this. It's a get an actual studio, right? Yeah. 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 I've, done, I've done well so far and I've managed yep. to stay within somewhat of a budget. Good. I'm a bit of a gear junkie. So that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a struggle for me. It's, 
all yeah. of a sudden I decide I wanted to do a YouTube live and some podcast or something, and I'm decked out like Joe Rogan. Like that's ten. That's that's, <laughs> that's, ten, that's where I usually go with it. But I didn't this time. I spent a lot of time on YouTube watching like budget setups and budget yeah. options, and yeah, there was a lot out there. So no one yeah. talked about what to hang in the background. No, none of them have yeah. any background tips. So I've got I've got my backlight. I've got my side lights. I don't have any front light, but I, I say it's it's working pretty well. I like it. Budget yeah. setup on the lights, um, with the exception of the light that's behind the bikes. But yeah, these yeah, two uh, no shadow on your face like mine, so we can see you clearly. That's good. Yeah, nice warm light. I didn't want to go with anything too cold, no. but conveniently, there's a remote for the lights. So we can just change it up if we want to. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're getting now, one now, excited now. now I, I, actually, I actually sold him on the lights. Oh, did you? I, I, they're, the, they're the exact same two that I have like in front of me right now. Okay. <laughs> but see, I go with a cooler light, and that just looks sick. You do, I, like, yeah. I should be in the hospital or something. <gasps> but a couple clicks later, and look at that. We're back to looking healthy. My skin... My cheeks are rosy, you know. It's it's uh, it's working out. There you go. Thank you for that, Owen. It's uh, hey, no problem. Probably the best hundred and thirty dollar purchase I made on Amazon in a while. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. That's the stupid thing about all this is, man, you can, if you're not careful, you can really go into the deep end. Yeah. Oh. Because of uh, Glippy 2023 um, and Matt Williams' fascination with the satellites flying overhead, Tall Man Moto for Eddie. Yeah. Um, AKA Half Sack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my appearance here is brought to you by Starlink because that's what we use here on the acreage. So. Oh, really? Oh, right on. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Elon. Yeah, <laughs> that changes you, the game no, for you. a lot of for a lot of people. I don't know if any of you guys follow. Uh, I think we missed a turn, Craig. There on the socials there too. He's, yeah, he's also one of our group there at the Epic GPS Adventures. But he's got a new truck set up. It's like a mobile office, and he's got the Starlink with them. And yeah, he's got. And what's worked uh, worked really well with him is that the truck has that uh, um, semi transparent clear fiberglass top. Yeah. So he's able to just mount the dish inside yep. up to the ceiling and That's still get sweet. signal. It can be com uh, completely covert. Yeah, completely. So even as he's driving, he can still get his internet and stuff. Yep. It's pretty yeah. pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. That uh that rig is gonna be at Gliffy. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how he uh I, I'm watching the progression and I'm looking forward to see uh where it gets by September. By how, September, how decked yeah. out it gets. Yeah, yeah. Super stoked for that guy. He's been that guy has been grinding it for so no, long I'm, and Craig's, so hard. Yeah. Craig's awesome. Yeah. He's a good guy. Good guy. That's well, I mean, the adventure community is all full of good guys, all full That's of true. good people. And by guys, I mean, everybody, I don't just mean guys. I mean, people, <laughs> people, there you go. people full of good people. What now, fellers? I don't know. We've done well. <laughs> so not too, not too bad. How long we've been here for? Uh, we're approaching very quickly an hour and forty five. Darn! The only thing missing is the campfire, dude. Right? Yeah. A few more months. We uh, we talked about Owen's first bike. Yep. Um, Chris, what was yours? And also, how long have you been riding? And then we'll bring that question to me. Okay. Okay. So my first bike was a Honda Ascot 500. A little one-cylinder Ascot. So that was my very first bike. I traded my... Um, what did I... I traded my 69 Fiat Spider straight across for the motorcycle. I took the Fiat Spider to the shop and the drivetrain fell out of it uh, during a service and the bike was sitting there and i says well you want to trade 
and the guy wanted to trade. So I rode home on a motorcycle, no motorcycle wow. license, no nothing. I just jumped on the bike and went home. But uh, the Honda Ascot wasn't in production for very long. Um, it's sought after now uh, by some flat track racers. Uh, apparently it makes a really good modded out flat track racer. Um, but it was fairly tame, fairly, I don't know, whatever kind of whatever bike. Uh, so that, yeah, that was my, my very first taste of, uh, of a motorcycle. And that was, it's kind of a sweet bike. I'm just looking at it. Yeah. Now. It's not too bad. It's Google it too. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not bad. Not bad. Not too bad uh stupid yeah. hard to find nowadays uh it would have been uh 80 85 or 86 honda ascot 500 500 f i think the the yeah. 83 and 84 was a, a 500 ft yeah okay yeah. so i may be off on my years um, which is fine yeah so it's around there is it you know mid to late 80s anyways uh, you know, Honda, Honda red. And, uh, yeah. So how long have I been riding for? I've been riding, um, geez, basically 17, at 30, least 37 years, at least 37 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I took a break. Uh, I took a break from riding for a while when I had, uh, you know, wife and kids and that stuff. And, uh, and then got back into riding and uh, my present wife. Um, uh, I, th I think I've told this story many times before, but I was the guy in the minivan uh, rather than holding on the steering wheel properly. I was holding on the steering wheel like this and I was leaning into corners and stuff like that. And I happened doing to be on the, Facebook market. Fingers, yeah, legs. pretty much. Yeah. Waving as the bikes go by. And I, wish I was riding. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I'm in the minivan going to a soccer game full of kids. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I came across uh, Facebook Marketplace, uh, found my dream bike, and uh, <laughs> Chris, <laughs> that's hilarious that comment. Um, but yeah, and and my wife now she says, you know, if if it'll make you happy, go and get it. And I think though that phrase is the phrase she regrets the most to this day, um, because you know I, I I took a break from from riding, got back into riding, and have just been focused obsessed and ever since and now that i've found dirt i've always been outdoorsy and i've always loved camping and you get the dual sport and you can did you know you can put camp gear on the dual sport and actually combine motorcycles and camping what <sighs> my mind was blown and now i am completely obsessed with the off-road off, off world it's just yeah so your turn oh so <laughs> <laughs> it was a warm summer in 2016 here we go <laughs> yeah so i first rode a motorcycle music. yeah i first rode a motorcycle um more than just like seeing what the clutch feels like on my one of my brother's cruisers um uh 19 or 2016 um so i was 42 um it was the August long weekend. It was a 2016 Honda CRF 250L. Um, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> but my brother-in-law handed me the keys and he's like, here, go. And I'm like, okay. So five minutes later, um, I want to buy a motorcycle. So I bought a KLR 650, uh, took a safety training course, and loved every minute of it. Um, and then after that, it would have been late, no, early 2018. So I had had the KLR for almost two years. Um, I bought the Super Tenere. And so, yeah, I've been riding before. I guess this is year number eight that I've been riding. And... I bought this 2018 and I've got 67,000 kilometers on it. Nice. And uh, 17 or 18,000 of that was just last year alone. So nice. The, That's the a miles add up quick. Um, yeah, I've been through 
a bunch of other motorcycles while I've had the Super Tenere, though. So I had an EXCF 350, um, a CBR 600RR uh, street bike. Um, the trials bike was a lot of fun. Um, and a WR 250R. Yeah, I remember yeah. your post on the trials bike. You still have that or did you get rid of that? I sold it last year. Oh, um, you did? Okay. It, it was it was a lot of fun and I kind of miss it. Yeah. Um, but I'm okay with not. Uh, we just downsized the fleet. I think there were... At one time, there was like six motorcycles between my <laughs> wife and I in the garage. Yeah, it was getting to be a little much, but right. uh, it worked. I disagree. Out. Yeah, yeah. It would. Well, I mean, you know, we had bigger vehicles than the Miata, so we couldn't fit all six bikes in the garage at one time. Right. Um, That's a garage problem, not a motorcycle problem. <laughs> well. I'm sitting in the double garage. There's another bay in the garage that's totally subdivided. And you've seen it, Owen. It's yeah, it's, yeah. it's an incredibly messy machine shop. So yeah, I don't I don't need more shit. Yeah. That's that's fair. And I don't think I need more beer. So. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bit of a motorcycle problem at home too. I've got too many bikes in the garage. Well, I shouldn't say that. Not enough bikes in the garage, but I've got all the bikes. <laughs> I got all the bikes for the girls now too, right? So that's awesome. That's all so the awesome. girls have yeah. their own bikes, and and uh, yeah, uh, collection just keeps on going and going and going. I and I I, I laughed when you said that, Owen, because it is a garage problem. I need, just need to add another bay to my garage. Yeah, that's just it. <laughs> never be a motorcycle problem. No, like, no, just just keep garage. on adding on. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. The Seamus is. Uh, uh, vehicles park outside and yes obviously no doubt um but uh, there's also two 20 foot sea cans on the property and the motorcycles also go in there so there's lots of room but i don't know it uh i didn't mind downsizing the fleet and i was actually talking to seamus uh, about a week ago about uh a crf 300 sl which is the factory lowered uh 300 that they have right and uh the fact that canada is not bringing them honda canada is not bringing them into canada um so yeah yeah I, I don't understand i don't understand that the thought behind some of their decisions honda canada yeah um so full disclosure too um seamus works at turple brothers in red deer alberta oh nice uh, so he's uh i would say i'm connected thanks to seamus um, but we'll see the response I get, or he gets back from Honda when he, uh, when he, when he does talk to them. Awesome. Yeah. Just reading, reading texts and comments here. Yeah. The, uh, the draw, like, here's another thing you can mention to them, Seamus, is they need to put the SL trim color package on the regular crf 3 fit 300 that the, that gray is is stellar and it needs to go on all of the bikes that is true yeah the the, the gray like that primer gray is just stellar <laughs> most of them even run, most run too that's wow. awesome long tooth that's awesome that that's great uh pretty envious of you guys that have wives mm -hmm. that that uh that ride you know i got the xr 150 to uh uh get my eldest daughter and my wife onto the street and uh i'm really hoping my wife um really digs the off-road because i'm envious of these couples that get to ride and you know at my house, I'm the only one that is obsessed with motorcycles. Every like I mention motorcycles, and you can, I'm, I'm sure all of Nanaimo can hear all of at the rest of the household's eyes roll. <laughs> Talking motorcycles again. So the eye yeah. roll heard round the world. That's yeah. right. That's right. It would be awesome to uh, to get it's, you know my daughter or my wife similar, out there with me. Yeah, it's similar to what happens when I start talking to people about motorcycles who are not motorcycle people. Exactly. Yeah. Like, so, oh. I I live that. <laughs> That's yeah. my household. It's like. Uh... All right. I'll do up a uh, if you want. I'll do up a uh, sticker pack giveaway. Sure. For your little viewers here, and what we'll do 
uh, with this sticker pack is I will include one of these, the emotional nice. support vehicle done by Eric Sweet. I nice. will also include one of last year's uh, rares at Get Lost Find Yourself stickers. As Does that well. mean that there's a new sticker for this year? There is. Ooh. Not just one. It has to be a sticker. Not just one. Where Where's the camera? Right. There. I don't like stickers at all. That one. <laughs> and, uh, and then the next one. <laughs> where is it there we go so we got the, cool. the group rider and the solo rider basically just like the posters but um yeah so i'll do a sticker pack giveaway with those as well as a bunch of others um to whoever can guess uh what's the question going to be there owen uh we've had two on me already um okay what's how about else? how many viewers you got right now 13 okay so out of these 13 who's there i'm going through the comments okay for this year's get lost find yourself the one who can guess the closest amount of prizes dollar wise to be raffled away will get the sticker pack so we have a oh. bunch a bunch of raffle prizes. Who can guess the closest dollar amount to the value of those prizes? Does that question make sense? Yep. Yeah, okay. it certainly does. Crashing Moda says 13K. So again, we'll do <laughs> we'll do the same rule as we did the last time, closest without going over. Yeah, closest without going over. Like the price is right rule. There yeah. you go. No one dollar entries. <laughs> How many guesses we got so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Long tooth says priceless. Absolutely. Yep. Right. Yep. <laughs> oh, no, long tooth's playing the art <laughs> like that. I like that. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> you think everybody's over? <laughs> I was just stealing that answer before somebody else could. There you go. There you go. Is that everyone? I think everybody's pretty much guessed. I think so. Okay. What do we got? Our closest guess. Our closest guess. Oh, there's a new comment. Oh, oh there's Damon's, Damon's here. I didn't even know he was here. Look at that. Yeah, he's he, Damon's been lurking in the background. Yeah. He's a photographer. They don't talk much. They just kind of hang had, out in the background. He's right? had a photographer with them recently, and he's got some he's got some fucking fire photos lately. Oh yeah. Yeah. KTM. yeah. Yeah, and Damon rides that 790 like Does. it was my 250. Like it's a dirt bike. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the guy's yeah. insane. Yeah. The guy's insane. Okay. I think everyone's got a guess. We're just going to tabulate the results. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put in my answer of what the, the prizes tally so far. Boom. Right there. So far, we have eighteen thousand one hundred and seventy-five dollars worth of stuff to raffle. Wow. That's insane! I know. It is insane, absolutely insane. So, who got the winning answer? I think it was Damon. Sixteen eight. Oh, he just beat out Kitty Kitty. Yep. All right, Damon, you're the winner. So yep. uh, you know how to get a hold of me, and I uh, will send you up a sticker pack. Congrats. That's awesome. So, yeah, yeah uh, any of you guys that are in the chats that are coming to Gliffy, bring your money. 
I want your money. Buy raffle tickets. <laughs> and don't yeah. try buying the pot on one prize. It doesn't work. <laughs> no, nope. no, it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. You got to put tickets in everything. So if, if for people that don't didn't watch the or weren't there, um, I was the first name drawn for the giant loop uh, round the world panniers package. And I think I put three tickets in that pile. Right. And it was the, it's just like, well, no, that's not fair. <laughs> that this is not correct. So we drew another name. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it, Owen was right. It doesn't work. Um, you got to spread them out, but yeah. 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 What is that? What, what's Kathy saying? Did you put all your tickets in for the drone? Owen? I did. I had every, <laughs> all of my guy. eggs in one basket, every single one of them. Oh, you poor guy. You poor guy. To no avail. No. And so, uh, you end up taking the drone. Um, Spencer. Sp that's right. Spencer took the drone. And I think you only put two tickets in there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so speaking of eggs in the basket, you know, all of the eggs in one basket. Um I was telling Owen before this the the podcast or the the stream started. This is actually the cover for my driver for golfing, and oh. uh, <laughs> these 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 are mass produced. The the company out of Arizona, but uh, I'm just gonna inappropriately squeeze the butt of this chicken. Um, but there's a golf ball stored in the butt of the chicken. Laying eggs. Yeah. Are you milking your chicken? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I think Damon should get a hold of me as well, by the way. Um, or Critter, wait, and I'll send you some stuff to send up with a sticker pack. Okay. I can do that. Good. Well, we've crested two hours. Look at that. We have crested two Way hours. to go, Owen. This is uh this is everybody give him a big clappy emoji in the comments there. This is <laughs> Owen's first live stream. So we all uh collectively popped his cherry on his live stream, his live stream cherry. So clap, clap. Way to go, Owen. Thank you, thank you. Your hands were full with dinner. Uh, Damon, did you not know they make utensils? <laughs> five utensils right here. <laughs> Another five over here. There you go. Look at that. Oh, and they love you. Everybody's giving you claps. All Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody follow this guy. Yeah. Sure. I, I definitely want to have, uh, I want to do more on the youtube and content world in general so uh dude it's a lot of freaking work but uh a lot of work. you know if you're if it's something you're passionate about it's uh you know what they say if you if, if you do something you're passionate about you're not really working so i mean that's what it does for me anyways <laughs> i just i just don't get any money from it but whatever no i hear you no it's not gonna be yeah. a money game for me too but it's a no it's fun to be part of the community. So yeah, and yeah. You know, on, on kind of a kind of a uh, semi serious note, back to uh, mental health and whatnot. You know, um, I had been advised by uh, numerous counselors after my uh, you know attempt and stuff, saying, "Don't stay away from social media. Stay away from the YouTubes. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do this. Don't do that." Because you're putting yourself out there. Um, but you know what I've found actually is my community. And you guys, you're part of my community. Um, man, has it ever been therapeutic? Like, like I thrive off of this stuff. This has been, everybody's saying it's bad, 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 bad. Don't do it. It's, it's not good for your mental health. Yeah. I have found the exact opposite. Um, I've found a calling and a purpose, a purpose in this. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, it's, it's been, it's been life-changing. So whether I, whether I make a dime or not, I, I don't care. I, I'm doing it you know, kind of selfishly for me, for my mental state, but also, you know, to help other folks and whatnot. But yeah, no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. 
Yeah, no, it's a it's a bit of a catch twenty two like social media. Like I can definitely yeah. see why it's bad for some people, and uh, it can be tough. I mean, I don't have that big of a following, but you get the odd troll that's just you know like in the living in their own misery and just comes yeah. out and make everybody else miserable. Like that's literally all they're doing. Yeah. And uh, but uh, at the same time, like just just through Instagram alone, like I've met, I've talked to people that I have yet to meet in person yet that I like consider friends already. Yeah, you know that like the second you actually meet in person, like you know it's just going to be like you've known each other for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. it's funny because that's how it was with with Ian and I. We talked for numerous numerous amounts of conversations back and forth before he came up for his first live stream. And when he pulled up on my on my driveway that day, you know, it was like hey, big hug. And it was like, man, we've been we've known each other since grade school. We've been hanging out forever, type thing, right? We just hit it off like bam, and when. Like you're saying, when you make those connections, like through a social media network, yeah. like it's, it's bizarre, but it's very cool, <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing being part of this, Owen. Thank you very much. I appreciate the hell out of the both of you. It's oh, there's a... Mrs. April saying, awesome job. Being supportive. Yeah. I have to remember Mr. April from now on. You're Mr. <laughs> April. Excellent. Taking that down. I've, yeah. I've already changed the contact name in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've got him in mind as like ladle sport Matt. So yeah. to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. <sighs> well, I think okay. we can, I think we can end it on that note. Guys, it's been a slice. Everybody that's still here, if you stuck around from the beginning, really appreciate it, and uh, and we'll do this again. Excellent. Here's Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, here's the riding season. Bye. Okay, how do you end this thing now? <laughs> I think I just hit end stream. What, what oh, do okay. I click? I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a head in my brisket sandwich again. Uh, just kidding. It's not over. No, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> Question for my end screen crew. <laughs> Thanks, uh, we will see you guys on the trails oh nice catch nice yeah. line i like that i've yeah. been saving that one saving uh -huh. that. all right stuff. i'm gonna end it here okay <laughs> all right later it's not done yet